Rain cycles are an important factor to all life. These freshwater downpours create and replenish surface water and underground water stores each year. As water falls from the sky, as rain, snow, sleet, or hail, its moisture causes life to spring up from the ground, both plant life and animals. Today's creature depends on the rain to soften the ground so it can emerge from months of hibernation, find a mate, and produce its offspring. Hi, I'm Miguel Caldera, and today I have with me a small creature which is rarely seen outside of the rainy season. That's because it spends most of its life under the ground. When the waters soak in, these creatures come out to mate and to live. It's the Great Plains Toad. These toads are native to the plains, southwestern United States and northern Mexico. During the rainy season, they surface and gather at streams or ponds to feed and breed. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these toads only come out when the rains fall. They come out and they feed on all the little invertebrates in the area, whether they're uh, beetles or uh, ants, moths, uh, and other little worms, these guys have a very short time that they're out. They have the spring, they have the summer rains. They come out, they have to feed and find a mate so that they can uh, reproduce and produce the next generation. They will lay their eggs in a, a shallow pond, a stream, slow moving uh, creek. And that tadpole will begin to develop in about six days, I believe it is. And then after about 17 to 45, it will go from a tadpole to a full-grown um, toad. And they get to up to about five inches in length, anywhere between two and five, and they spend most of their lives under the ground. A lot of things will eat these guys, snakes, uh, larger toads, birds of various sorts. And as you can see, he wants to get back into a, a moist area, perhaps back underground, so that he can continue his life cycle. The Great Plains Toad is mostly nocturnal, and its large eyes help it find prey in the dark. They also assist the toad in feeding by pushing prey down its throat from the inside. Another cool fact about these little creatures is how they use their legs to dig their burrows. There's this small little hardened surface. Sorry, little guy. Oh. On the rear foot here. And it allows them to dig through the hard surface down into the ground where they can have a burrow which they fill with mucus. And there they will stay until the next rains. Now these little creatures have an amazing ability. They are capable of holding up to 30% of their body weight as water. So imagine, if you weigh 150 pounds, you would be holding 50 pounds purely as water. And the reason they do that is because they live underground in an arid environment. Holding 30% of their body weight as water helps them to combat desiccation. They don't want to dry out, which is very easy to do in this environment. A very neat strategy. The paratoid gland 
just behind the eye, secretes a thick toxic liquid as its means of defense. Now the neat thing about these, these toads, like frogs and other amphibians, is that they are indicator species. In other words, they will indicate the toxicity of the environment around them. If there's pollution in the soil, if there's toxins in the water, you will begin to see changes in these species if they don't start to die out altogether. Now this little guy right here, I'm going to bring him close, is beginning to exhibit just that. Notice the right rear exhibits a deformity. That is an indication of toxicity in its environment. The nearby sewage treatment reservoir is the likely culprit, and the toad's ability to hop has been affected. The Great Plains Toad. Until next time, I'm Miguel Caldera. Get out and enjoy your hunt for nature. As I reflect upon the toad's need of rain to survive, I am reminded of a king's wise words. Whoever falsely boasts of giving is like clouds and wind without rain. As true rain clouds bring refreshing life to these creatures, so does following through on our word to those around us.